be our October wrap up. We're on time, fairly. Fairly. Yeah. We're only <laughs> like sort of midway through November. Yeah. <laughs> and I haven't read any books yet. <laughs> Starting off with a bang. So I'll go first. I uh, I read six books, uh, five actual books, and one. <laughs> sort of audio book. <laughs> sort of? Yeah, I'll audio. explain to that when we get there. Okay. First book I read was The Woman in the Walls by Amy Lukovic. I read one of her books last year. Was she the one who did Daughter Unto Devils? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I don't know, but it, I read one of her books last year, and I really liked it. And I really liked this one, too. I, of course, I didn't rate it, and now I forget. <laughs> um, I got a great memory. I only really liked it. I thought it was a little slower than her previous book, whatever her previous book was that I did read. <laughs> <laughs> and then I read um, Mary the Summoning, Bloody Mary 1, by Hilary Monaghan. That was a good book. It was really creepy. It was about Bloody Mary. They summoned Bloody Mary. Nice. Everyone knows, pretty much everyone knows the urban legend of Bloody Mary. You know, you call her in the mirror. You say her name three times. Yep. And, uh, it was cool because, like, at some point she would come out of the mirror. Mm. It was, like, really creepy. There's two in the series, and I read both of them. I really enjoyed them. They were good creepy October reads. I recommend them. You know, they're pretty quick. They're not very big reads. But they do get the creep factor in there. And then I read A Cozy Mystery, A Pumpkin Spice Murder, A Frosted Love Cozy Mystery. This is number 17 in the series by Summer Prescott. I've read her books before. I'm not reading them in order. I'm reading them according to season. <laughs> so, I mean, from a uh, I did not read like any of my books. I'm bad booktuber this month. Or last bad, bad, month. bad. But I liked it. I know I liked it. You know, it's a cozy mystery. They're just fun to read. And I keep playing with my hair. I need to stop. <laughs> They're just like fun, quick reads. You know, nothing like real creepy happened. I mean, people die in them and all that. But I liked it. It was good. Then my one physical book I read was the... Retribution of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. This is the last book in the Mara Dyer series trilogy. I finally finished it. I bought this new when it came out two years ago. <laughs> so I finally finished this. I had to go and like go into recaptions and like read a summary of the last book because that's how long it's been. But I really enjoyed it. I know some people had some like iffy iffiness on it, but I liked it. I thought it wrapped up well, and I have a signed copy, which is fun. I just don't physically own the first one. I need that, because I really, I would read this series again. I really liked it. And it's just, like, so weird. <laughs> so Isn't it, like, one of those, if you don't, you don't really know, kind of, like, if she's crazy or if she's not yeah, crazy? Yeah, like, most of the series, you're like, is she seeing things? Is this really happening to her? Does she have powers? It's it's good, and it takes, obviously, they wrap it all up in the end. I'm not going to say anything, because it's the last in the series, but I enjoyed it. And my one audio book I read. So I, to fall asleep, I watch ASMR videos, and if you don't know what that is, you can look it up. It's like relaxing videos for people with depression and anxiety and insomnia. They listen to to go to sleep, and sometimes they just talk softly to you. Sometimes you get tingles in your scalp. I get tingles in my scalp from certain sounds. And one of my favorite ASMR artists, Pudding Whispers. <laughs> His name is Justin. I feel weird calling him Pudding. Whatever. He read, he read Go the Fuck to Sleep. <laughs> what? <laughs> By Adam Mansbach. <laughs> it's a children's book. Loosely, it's oh. it is funny. 
It is really funny. I recommend you read it. But he read, read it. This book. He read it in one of his videos. So I'm like, I listened to it. I'm there you go. That for Goodreads. Why not? <laughs> So, so it's like a children, adult children. Yeah. Show. Okay. It's really funny, and I really enjoyed it. And so I'm like, well, I'm just gonna count that. I listened to it. So that's that was my October. <laughs> All right. So I actually did pretty good for myself in October. Of course, it helped that we I did that I did a little bit of the Dewey 24 Hour Readathon. That helped me a lot, because during that yeah. time, I, at the beginning of the month, actually, I think towards the end of September, I had started reading Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black, so I read that, and I liked this story. Actually, I loved this story. I love this take on vampires, um, and I really want her to write another one. To see how, because I want to see how their story goes, how the main characters' stories go, and all of a sudden I can't remember their names. <gasps> I should have read Is it, it in the blurb? Yeah, I think so. I want to say Dimitri, but I know that's not. No. Tana? Yeah, they're weird names. And I forget his name. He's a Russian vampire. I keep wanting to call him Dimitri, but it's not Dimitri. <laughs> that's from Vampire Academy. That's from <laughs> Vampire Academy. <laughs> But I really, really liked that story. And then, also during the Dewey 24 Hour Readathon, I read by Danielle Page. I read The Wizard Returns. I don't like The Wizard. He's selfish. No, you're. A, I was gonna say he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. I'm, I mean, I guess you could. Well, I just said the F word a couple minutes ago. Why not? Yeah, but that's popping the off with all kinds title. of swears in this video today. <laughs> so I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I liked the story. I just didn't like the wizard. You're not supposed to like him. I want to like the face. characters. But Although characters are horrible. I know. Other than Amy. Amy. She got my name. She's awesome. <laughs> And then the last book that I read was The Eternophiles <coughs> by Leanna Renee Heiber. I actually met this author last year, and again this year at my brother's Space Coast Comic Con. She came out with a bunch of authors, and I bought some books from her for us. Like, I got her part of a series, and I thought it was this series. No, it's a different one. It's a different series. So, I got finished with this book, and I'm like, Roberta, can I borrow the second? And she's like, I don't have the second. I'm like, oh, bummer. So, now I gotta wait till night. Well, I mean, I guess I could order it now, but I actually like talking to her, so I think I may wait until September to get the next, to get the other two. But, it's based in Victorian New York and London. Um, basically, it's just after, it, it begins just after Lincoln's assassination. And the whole premise behind it was Mary Todd Lincoln was obviously depressed about losing her husband. <coughs> and she knew that one of the senators had a charge, um, a, a, gar a kid that he was guarding, that had this ability to communicate with the dead. And she wanted them to come up with a way to stop death, hence the Eternophiles. Um, the other one from, there's another group from London, they're called the Omega Team. And they're trying to stop the Eternophiles from learning how to end death first. It's a really good book. There's a lot of death in this book. <laughs> But there's also a lot of, you know, paranormal, and if you're into paranormal and Victorian, I recommend this book. It's really good. So, that was my October. Right now, I am reading My True Love Gives to Me. Gave to me. Gave to me. Gave to me. Gave to me. And then I'm thinking my next book after that will be Winter, since we are going into winter. You see the theme yet? <laughs> But we'll see. We'll see what I'm in the mood for once I get done with my true love to me. So, that was it. So, for October for me, I read um, two books. 
The first book was Tale of Witchcraft, stories by Stephen King, Robert Block, M.R. James, Saki, E.F. Benson, and others. Um, it's a bit of an older book. I got this for Christmas, I think, last excuse me, yeah. year. Um, Amy got it for me for Christmas. No. Nikki. Did, did I? Yeah, I think. Oh, okay. yeah, it was Nikki. Because she okay. got me the vampire one. Okay. Um, this one was okay. The Stephen King story was like, oh, and I read that one first. It was really good. I don't really remember too, too much. I just remember not really liking the stories that much, except the Stephen King one. Hazing was amazing. Super creepy. Stephen King. His story was basically, um, this lady had a sick mother, and she was bedridden. She had to go into town for something. And she left her, like, nine-year-old son with the grandmother. And she dies while her mom's away. Oh, God. And he's thinking that she's not really dead. So, it's, oh, my God, it's so creepy. It's really creepy. Um, and then I read The Ultimate Dracula. There are stories in here by Anne Rice, Dan Simmons, Philip Jose. It says, the new stories or new stories by some of the world's leading authors. Oh, I love this book. This is really good. And there's this one story in here. Um, it's called A Matter of Style by Ron D. So funny. I actually like liked it better than the Anne Rice story. Basically, this guy, he gets turned into a vampire, and he has no game, okay? <laughs> None whatsoever. <laughs> And so he's, he, he figures out, because um, the premise in this book is that uh, the vampires, they have to stay with, like, their dirt. Um, so he goes back to his coffin every night, but he can rise from the grave as a fog. They can mist themselves. And then he can kind of basically shapeshift into whatever he wants. Well, in order to get blood... He's found that the only way that he can really get it, because he's not very attractive, is to dress as a woman, or, or to make himself as a woman. And the first time he does, he, he envisions, and he envisions, and he envisions, and so he comes up for the night, and he's a woman, he thinks, because he can't see himself in a mirror. Oh. And he sees a guy walking, and this guy's looking at him, he's like, yeah, I'm hot, I'm going to get me some blood. And the closer he gets to this guy, the guy starts freaking out. Was like, ah, he has no face. <laughs> he never got to give himself a face. <clears throat> it is so funny. And he ends up meeting Dracula in California. And Dracula is dressed like, <laughs> like he, he's a woman. Um, and he keeps, Dracula keeps telling him, because he, like, idolizes, like, all the old, like, vampire story. Like, all the actors from, like, the little mm. ghosty and, and those. Um, and he's like, yeah, you gotta adapt. You gotta, you know. And he ends up, like, draining. Dracula ends up draining him. <laughs> it is such oh a God. good story. I felt so bad for him. But he has... Oh, he had no game. He would, like, rather than just making himself look hot, which he did, he figured that out, but instead of, like, just walking into a place and letting women come to him, he didn't. He would go up to them and say these cheesy-ass lines that wouldn't work on anybody. <laughs> That's why I say this. Kind of like... I had no game. Kind of like Paul and Big Brother? Remember that set that... One episode where they're talking about pickup lines. Oh, I don't remember that one. Okay, never mind. But yeah, it was really good. That's the only other book that I've read I, that I read for October. Um, I, so far, I've read one book this month, and I'm on my second one, so we'll talk more about that next time. But yeah, that's it for me. All right, guys. Until next time. Bye.